in here among us tonight, and that is that Martin Sheen brought the way, brought the way to that tiny island, going out of his way greatly to do so, but never, never, uh, never making it difficult at all. And let me just read a passage. One of the things he most wanted to do when he came, of course, Malta is a place in the middle of a storm now. The Arab Spring is beneath it. If it is a spring, we don't know if it's a spring or a dark winter. That too will require our help. But one of the things we know about what's happening there is that thousands of people, Eritreans, Somalians, Nigerians, <coughs> are migrating, looking for a way of escape from the violence. And it wouldn't surprise you that the first people Martin wanted to see in Malta was not ambassadors and prime ministers and heads of state. He wanted to go to the Calfar, to the detention center. Martin Sheen, whose West Wing acting is well known throughout Europe, very thoughtfully visited us with his grandson Taylor to premiere the highly acclaimed movie The Way. By the way, it was the first premiere uh, in Malta, you know, since that silent film in the artist, in the real one. <laughs> and, he, and he did it totally as a fundraiser for, for a, a, a priest that John would have loved, a little Franciscan priest named Father Mintov. Up in his 80s, a youngster, as far as John would be concerned. It is a thoughtful film set along the way of St. James in Spain, and the message of the film, like Martin's entire career, helps us appreciate the things that really matter. The Maltese were enamored with the film's genuine and heartfelt religious theme and with the spirituality of Martin, who generously lingered with anyone who sought him out. A significant sum came to Father Mintoff by reason of Martin's talent and his son Emilio, who acted and directed the project. The money came just in the nick of time to assist the influx of migrants coming because of the outbreak of violence. You can see these pictures in the book, and I hope you, you will enjoy them. They are, they, they are uh, fond memories for me. We would have each of the migrant families over to our home before they departed to the place of resettlement in the United States. They didn't have a clue what the ambassador was saying, just like you this evening. Uh, <laughs> They had the excuse, or I had the excuse, that there were several different African dialects being spoken that night. But I would always tell them two things. One was, don't forget your culture when you come to us, because it's an enormous gift. It's an enormous gift to us to open our eyes to the rest of the world, to see how blessed, how truly blessed we are. And then I would admit that you know most of them wanted to be, uh, to be Americans very quickly. And I only knew one way in which to make them Americans, and, I, and it was to give them this very important warning, this very important caution. I said they would no sooner get off the plane if they weren't prepared in some fan of the very expensive New York Yankees would want them to come their way or some fan of the movable Dodgers would want to come their way, but I said, you know, the way to fit in as an American is to root for America's team, the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> I don't know what they like. And they would all have caps. They had no idea what the Cubs stood for, what the caps stood for. They knew it made the ambassador happy. They didn't want anything revoked at that moment. So someday, in a century far off, in a distant time and place, when the Cubs win the series, <laughs> there will be a Nigerian sitting in Brindley with his cap, saying, Cubs win! Cubs win! <laughs> you know, I would... Uh, so many wonderful people came visit John in the hospital from Ireland.